Hey there, everybody. Today I have the Zond and Corman Diver. Now, I apologize if I am screwing up the pronunciation of the brand. From now on, throughout the rest of the review, I will be referring to it as the Z and K. Now, these can be had from timeisyours.ch. That is the name of their website, which <clears throat> it gets a little confusing, I guess, at least to me, that that's the name of your website, but your brand of watches is, is the Z and K. But moving on to that, these are actually, the day you are seeing these, they're going to be available on Kickstarter. I'll, of course, have the link in the description below. Now, I apologize in advance because I have really not had a lot of time with this watch before doing this video. And uh, anything that I forget, please check the full review. The article, the link to the article will be down in the description below at watchreport.com. And hopefully I can cover the rest of the information. And of course, whether it's their website or their Kickstarter, you could find the rest of the information there. But at least here, you'll get a really good look at the watch. So now this is the second model from z and k And price-wise, you are going to be looking at a price of... 407 or excuse me 467 dollars to 712 dollars usd i did i converted that from swiss francs and the difference in price is because the different options that are available this is a blue dial there are at least five other dials available dial colors available and this is um the base elaborate or excuse me, I should say the Elaborate SW200 movement, but then there is also a COSC option available. And then on top of that, this is the stainless steel, there is also a titanium option available. So depending on what options you choose is you know going to determine the price that you're going to pay for this. Let me go ahead here and read you the specifications you are looking at a 44 millimeter case, 14.9 millimeters in thickness, 51 millimeter lug to lug. It of course, as I said, is an SW200 movement. You do have a sapphire crystal. You have a sapphire bezel insert. As I said, you do get a lot of options when it comes to uh, colors and everything. 600 meters water resistant, screw down crown, and BGW9 Super Luminova on the markers and hands. Now I have not weighed it yet. I will weigh it here on my scale in a second because this piece is surprisingly hefty. I mean, it it really does have a good amount of heft to it. When we're talking about the design or the style, you know, I have to say, uh, you know, up front, yeah, it's kind of Rolexy. It really is, uh, you know, a Submariner homage style of case. Obviously, the dial, and you could see that dial pattern, the striped dial pattern, the hands and the markers are not exactly what you would see on a Rolex. But when you look at the case shape, and of course I'll give you, you know, just like usual with every review, I'll give you a good look all around the case and the bracelet and all that. But when you look at it, it has that Rolex look. It has the Oyster Link bracelet, all of that. So to me, the real draw here is going to be the fact that one, you can get it in titanium, and two, if you choose, that you can get it with a COSC certified movement. Okay, so I did go ahead and put it on my scale. It weighs 205 grams. Now, um, I did not size this watch, and I didn't have to because uh, it came to me. This is a sample or a prototype. Um, I have to send this on to somebody else. And as it is, um, it, it really does fit my wrist perfectly. If I was to size it, uh, this has a ratcheting extension clasp on here which I'm sure a lot of you uh, are familiar with these days. If I was to go ahead and size this, I would only need to take out one link, and then I'd probably have to, well, I know at that point it would be too tight, and I would have to open up that dive extension uh, so it would be able to fit on my wrist. So basically out of the box, at least for this example, it's only fitting my seven and a half inch wrist. I do not know if the bracelets will be larger come production. 
Speaking of production, you're looking more towards August, September for completion of this watch if you go ahead and pre-order or back the Kickstarter. So I want to get that information out there as well. Now, why I have, uh, while I have the bracelet being shown here, I do want to point out that it is not screws in this bracelet. I do not know, again, if that will be updated come production. I have not been told. It is just friction pins and you know, there's always a parallel, you know, there's going to be give and take when you're looking at a watch like this. When you're talking about, um, you know, an elaborate SW200 or if you're going with the COSC option, etc. And you're still not even at the highest price point for this particular one. You're only at $800. There's always going to be some compromises. And I guess they decided to go with a more standard bracelet and went with friction pins over one-sided screws. Here you can see the, um, you can see nothing. Uh, we'll go ahead here and um, I will, hey, there you could see the coin edge bezel. The, the watch wanted to take a nap. You could also see it's got that helium release valve right there. I think everybody knows my feelings on that, but it does have one if you are, uh, you know, someone that actually needs it. But uh, I'll go ahead here and I'll undo the clasp so we can actually get a good shot at that case back. It's an exhibition case back, and that way you can get a look at the movement. Now, this is the elaborate grade in the sample that I have. Before I go ahead and show you the case back, I wanted to point out um, there is a GMT version available as well. Pricing is different on that. So if you want to take a look at that, go ahead and hit that link to their Kickstarter or to their website, and you could find the pricing and information on the GMT version. I believe, and I'm not 100% sure right now when I'm recording this video, I believe the color options are the same. Of course, it's just going to be an SW220 GMT movement, and then I believe the color options are all the same, the titanium option and all of that. Go ahead and give you a look here at that exhibition case back and that SW200 um, elaborate grade movement. As I said, there are also COSC options available. And one thing I want to point out when I turn this watch around uh, and hit the record button, if you see these little prongs right here, those are actual little pushers. You could either use a tool or use your uh, fingernails. And you can actually pop the bracelet on and off with those. Uh, it'll uh, pull on the spring bar and allow easy removal of that. And that's something you don't always see with bracelets like this. So I do have to say that is a nice touch. So let's go ahead here and uh, we'll give you a close-up look of this dial and case and all of that. So as I said, you do have that striped patterned dial. For some reason, and let me go ahead here, um, this is a screw down crown. Let me go ahead here and move those hands so we could see this writing that is here on the dial. And um, I'm chuckling only because I just don't understand why you would put helium release valve right there on the dial. Hopefully you could see that. But you do have your date there at the 3 o'clock position. Let's take a good look at that very large um, Z and K logo. Get a little more light on it there for you. You do have uh, your uh, loom pip there, and you have that red triangle. Now, when you look all around... Uh, this watch you're going to see like I said a lot of familiarity to um, the Rolex Submariner or Rolex Sub C style more of the Submariner actually and you're going to see a lot of uh, similarity you do see you have polished chamfer edges there the rest of it is all brushed it is a coin edge uh, rotating bezel, of course. And actually, this rotates very nicely. It's very clean, very crisp. And uh, I have no problem uh, grabbing a hold of it. There's more than enough clearance and more than enough to grip onto. So no issues with that either. 
Um, but uh, there is your walk around this ZNK diver. Here is a look on my seven and a half inch wrist. As I um, I have not sized this yet, as I already talked about, and uh, you could see why because really. I really don't have much room to go and because I have to uh, kind of complete this review as quick as I do I need to get this shipped off um, I felt you know what wasn't really worth it anyway now I'm not sure like I said if this will go to production or like this or if I'll have more links attached but there is a look of this 44 millimeter case of the Z and K diver in blue Here is a look at the BGW9 Super Luminova. As you can see, they also decided to loom the logo. And um, if I was give this a grade on the loom scale, I would probably put this at a 7. Um, it's pretty darn good, but not absolutely fantastic. So, as always, I always have some comments, usually, and uh, here's some of my comments on this watch. And, um, again, I apologize for this review maybe being a little rushed or a little out of sorts or whatever. But, again, I really am on a time crunch, and I do apologize for that. But that, that is just the way this one uh, happened to work out. In my personal opinion, because of the Rolex Homage style of case and bracelet it to me the real way to go about this one is to me go for i mean if you like the heft of stainless steel i guess go stainless steel but get the cosc option because to me to be able to get a cosc watch at under 800 dollars, a cosc swiss um i was gonna say swiss Etta, but sw200 in the case of this particular one to me that is where the value is at. If you go with the standard SW200, I'm, I'm just not sure the value is there compared to the marketplace of everything else that is out there. As far as the watch itself, it seems to be built relatively well. It's solid. It has a nice heft to it. And I really can't complain a lot about the build quality. Um, that patterned dial, the striped pattern dial, is a nice touch. It does give it, um, you know, a, you know, it's different than your standard Rolex Submariner homage. It is not just like, okay, here's our hundredth version of the Rolex Submariner, like you know, with the same dial hands, Mercedes hands, all that kind of stuff. But that case and bracelet does have that similar look. One thing that aggravates me, I guess, is one, I do not like the polished center links on the bracelet. Never have, never will. Um, but you have these polished center links. And then when you go to the ratcheting dive clasp, this is just a stock, you know, dive clasp. Um, you do have the sides are polished. But what's funny about that is, and I apologize that this uh, does not want to uh, focus right now. There we go. What's funny is the sides of the bracelet are brushed and then your sides of your clasp are polished. But this just creates a really stark, weird uh, contrast here. The fact that, um, you know, it, it's pretty much, it's just like, okay, we went and engraved a... Um, uh, ratcheting dive clasp here and we added it to this oyster link bracelet i would have liked to see a more custom style clasp now again a lot of these things as usual are me nitpicking of course i come across a lot of watches and and i'm going to be a little more picky maybe than the average uh, buyer or enthusiast or whatever the case may be now hold on a second because i went ahead and i dropped my remote Okay, I have the remote now. Oh my god, everything. You know what, this video is just isn't going the way I wanted to, but you know what, it's going to stay anyway. Real honest review, and that's what we're getting here. But back to the Z and K. Um, back to the Z and K, and I'm not exactly sure what uh, I was saying. Oh, you know what, I can get nitpicky sometimes, and, and, and that's just the way it is. Um, and again, you, when you're looking at, they seem to place a lot of importance, of course, on making a, a dial stand out. So they went with that textured pattern dial. 
And they went ahead and, you know, you're going to get that COSC movement option or you can get it in titanium as well. So I guess there's going to be corners cut when you're looking at the price of, of what they are releasing these for on Kickstarter. I am not sure offhand what that retail price is going to be, but this video is getting long. So we're going to cut it off here. Uh, the links are going to be in the description as usual. If uh, you want to see more, please hit the uh, link in the description to the full article at watchreport.com. You, uh, you could follow ZNK on uh, Instagram. I will leave the link to that, uh, what their Instagram name is, because it is under Time Is Yours and not under the ZNK brand. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, please go ahead and do so. Hit that notification bell twice. That way you never miss any of our content. Follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. This has been Don Evans for WatchReport.com, giving you a look at the ZNK Diver. Thanks for watching. Talk to you on the next one.